says that you can only start ballet when you are a tiny little toddler? Who says that if you start late, you can actually make a career out of ballet? We all grew up thinking that if we didn't start ballet at two, we can never make it. And that's just far from the truth. I started ballet at 23 and I already performed three times. I'm learning and improving at such a fast rate and I'm actually getting paid to do ballet now. And I never believed that was possible. I did a video six months ago talking about how to start ballet with some tips and tricks on how to get started, but this is not it. This is just my story. With all of the mishaps and all of the things that I've accomplished, I have performed, but I have also been kicked out out of my ballet studios. I've encountered so many people that didn't believe that it was possible for me to even learn how to dance ballet in my 20s. And that's just so far from the truth because there is a space in ballet for everyone. And I just wanted to tell you my story so maybe it can serve as a little motivation and maybe even inspire you to start your own ballet journey. So dance has always been one of my biggest passions. Growing up, I was always a little entertainer in the house. I was always putting on little recitals that I would make my entire family watch for hours. I loved dancing, I loved performing, and I made my parents sign me up for ballet when I was around five, and I did it until I was seven. When I got into primary school, I didn't really have the schedule to keep on taking the same classes that I was taking, and after that, my parents just couldn't afford it, so I never danced ballet again. I actually did modern dance for four years, until I was 10, and then from 10 to 12, I did hip hop which I really did not like because I was taking classes with adults and I just didn't connect with it the same way that I did with the previous dance styles. And because I lost that passion for dance, I actually gave up dancing when I got into seventh grade. And that unfortunately was also the year where I was severely bullied and that was a very tough year for me. And I lost most of my sense of self, I lost my self-esteem, and that year just completely changed how I perceived myself. So after that awful year at 14, I decided to go back to what I loved most because I was in this journey of trying to find myself again. So I went back to my old ballet studio because ballet used to be my favorite type of dance. And I got there, I said that I wanted to sign up again, and... I was met with that stare that most of us like adult ballet beginners are familiar with it's going to be very difficult I mean yes you can sign up but because I stopped at seven I would have to do ballet with eight-year-olds and at 14 I just didn't have the confidence to just go for it and join the class with a bunch of eight-year-olds so I never signed up during my teens, I never really danced again and I didn't really find another passion for any other sport because to be honest, I really just struggled with eating disorders and disordered eating and I only really exercised as a punishment. So I really didn't have the best relationship with movement. When I was 15, I was also diagnosed with a hip dysplasia, which meant that a normal hip joint would be like this and mine was way smaller so my femur would like bounce around and it would like pop off randomly and when I was 17 I was actually booked for an emergency surgery that never happened because Portuguese healthcare system wasn't the best it was a very complicated surgery and I just stayed on the waiting list but it was never really my turn until March of 2020 which obviously made the surgery never happen and that meant that that for most of my life I really struggled with this hip condition and because of that doctors also told me to avoid exercising anything that was related to my hip. In my last semester of college something really awful happened and that kind of made me reach my breaking point when it came to getting back to dance because I had this secret YouTube channel for years at that point and only my close friends knew about it. I only did it for fun. And 
yeah, obviously people found out about it and no one actually told me but basically a group of people from my old university decided to stream my videos during parties and then film videos reacting to those videos and they shared them in like whatsapp groups and all of that and eventually that reached some of my friends that eventually told me and that kind of destroyed me it brought me to this really bad headspace um, I couldn't really understand how people could be so awful and mean and especially at that age like when that happened I was 23 and that insane amount of like bullying and meanness it's not something that's supposed to happen when you are an adult but it did and around that time I also read The Midnight Library which is this self-help book that is really really famous and I feel like it's not the best thing in the world but it really made sense for my life at that point because I was just going through it and it's just a book that talks about regrets and the only thing that I came up with being one of my regrets is this deepness sadness of knowing that I was never going to dance on point even though I was a ballet lover and I just really wanted to dance and I always wanted to be on point in that exact like month where that all happened I also saw the Swan Lake with my mom and all of those things together just really made me think that I needed to start ballet because it was an hour enough thing and I had nothing to lose even though I didn't really know that you can do it as an adult When I decided that I wanted to start ballet I actually spoke with a friend of mine that I knew that did ballet and I told her that I was trying to find a studio if she knew anything that could like take adults uh, that wanted to start and she told me just come to my class like we have a really diverse group with different skill levels and we are all different ages and I think you would be fine there just come and speak with the teacher and I went I spoke with the teacher and she was just the most amazing lady like I told her that I was really insecure about uh, starting because I wasn't sure if I could do it with my hip and I also didn't have the right body type for doing ballet and she just told me stop saying what you are saying right now this class is not training anyone just to be a professional everyone that is here is here because they love to dance and it doesn't matter your body type you are here because you want to learn how to dance and the only thing that I'm asking of you is to do what you are capable of and do your best but also find joy in dancing and that's the only thing that I want so don't think too much about it and just start like come to the next class prepared and you can start those months doing ballet there was just magical I cannot describe the experience that I had it was completely life-changing like I felt like ballet was a missing piece in my life I improved so much in those months and what made that experience be so good wasn't actually just the dance itself it was the girls that were taking the classes with me because even though it was a very diverse group like the youngest was 14 and the oldest was 25 like I felt like we all connected and became friends because we found like our common ground like some of the girls were Swifties like me they were watching the same shows that I watched as a teenager it was just such a welcoming and encouraging environment if someone was sad in a day everyone would notice and try to make the other person feel better like those classes during my last semester of university really were just my lifeboat they became my safe place they were my everything and i'm so grateful that i had that in that very difficult point in my life and after two months of being there I actually got to perform for the first time because the teacher said if I was taking the classes I was obviously going to perform we did this variation for um, the boy there which is one of the most difficult ballets to do I had a big injury at that point when the show came around because my body wasn't ready for that amount of exercise and 
how technically it was because I didn't really have any muscle in my hips so my hip flexors basically just blocked and I actually stopped walking at some point but I managed with the help of doctors get semi okay to be able to perform I was so nervous but I had so much fun like looking at it now I know that I wasn't that good but I was so happy with it and I'm so thankful that I got that opportunity I just look at that moment in my life and I feel like it was the best thing that could have happened to me and it was after my first performance that I posted my first ballet video because the girls from my class were always filming like little things for TikTok and all of that and I didn't really have a TikTok until then they encouraged me to create it and I posted the video it got a lot of positive feedback and it was after I posted that video that I found the ballet community online but then I was accepted in my dream masters in Iceland and I knew that I just had to go. So I moved to Iceland to follow my lifelong dream and when I got here I tried to find a ballet studio to continue on with my lessons and I ended up signing up for some course for adult beginners but it was an absolute uh, beginner class and I didn't really enjoy it. It was just too slow. It was an hour long class, two per week, but for each hour we did bar for 15 minutes and then we would do some center for like 10 minutes, but like we would do plies for 20 to 30 minutes and it wasn't as challenging as my previous classes were and I felt really unmotivated. I felt like I was losing all of the progress that I did. I didn't even feel sore after a class. I know beginner classes are incredibly important and if you like do them well, you still get sore. Being a beginner class, it doesn't really matter. I think the issue was just that class. So I didn't really progress much. I started to question if I even wanted to continue on with lessons because they were really, really expensive. So after one semester, I ended up quitting because I just couldn't afford the classes. And mainly I couldn't justify spending so much money on something that I didn't absolutely love. But I didn't want to stop with ballet. So for six months, I tried to do at home ballet classes but I was living in a very tiny tiny little apartment you can go and see my old apartment tours to see how small they actually were so I couldn't actually like lift my leg if I was doing a class and I tried to focus on strength training but the motivation was very low and because I decided that I wanted to move back to Portugal during the summer I was just going to do ballet then so, last summer, as soon as I go back to Portugal, I sign up for ballet classes. And in this time, I sign up for two studios instead of one, because my old ballet teacher had moved studios, and half of the girls went with her, and the rest of the group stayed in the same studio. And I couldn't choose between the two of them, so I just joined both. And with my old teacher, everything was the same the same teaching style but at the new studio I actually found another amazing teacher Mariana and I just really have to say thank you for that because after like two weeks of being there with her she told me that I could perform with the girls even though they had been with her for the entire year and I didn't and basically because all the other girls were so much more advanced than I was. She created this whole routine where I was in the middle and the girls were on each side like doing a mirrored choreography and she even gave me like a little solo. It was very simple and very cute, very basic to be honest, but I still really enjoyed it. I was super nervous, but it was one of the best experiences that I've ever had. So yeah, after that amazing summer of dancing almost every day and improving at such a rapid pace, I just couldn't let that go. I really missed ballet, but at the same time, I missed my old life in Iceland because I missed my independence and I missed my own house. And as soon as I got back to Iceland, I started looking at a new ballet studio because I knew that I needed to find something that was more similar to what I had back in Portugal because that was what I loved. The challenge, improving at a rapid pace, not the beginner ballet classes for adults where you just go 
in once or twice per week and you never really connect with it you never really improve and i just needed to find something like what i had in portugal but i need to get away from these waves before the ocean comes and gets me after the summer i got back to iceland and i immediately emailed every studio that i could find i tried to explain my story saying that i had started ballet at 23 i had done it for almost a year and a half that i really wanted to continue on doing ballet and learning and i had the goal of getting on point and i really just wanted a place to learn how to dance and I waited for some responses and I ended up signing up for uh, some sort of pre-professional school. I had classes six times a week, sometimes up to like four hours per day and it was completely insane. I was super happy because I felt like I was finally like getting my chance but it was so challenging. I was sore all the time by the point that I reached like the sixth or even fifth class of the week. I couldn't walk anymore. I had to go to physiotherapy every other week so I could keep up with that level because my body doesn't work with this amount of exercise in a proper way but i felt like i was improving but then also not that much because it was too challenging the classes were too advanced i didn't really have the space to ask questions and ask to slow down and for the teachers to break the steps up also the classes were in icelandic which i don't understand and it made it really difficult um to understand some of parts of the classes even though the steps are in French the rest of the class is not and I felt really frustrated at the same time because even though I had every opportunity to become the best dancer that I could I wasn't actually achieving that potential even though it seemed like a great time in my life it wasn't perfect but then something happened my phone died and I had to get a new one and because the new phone had a better quality camera I decided to film a new video in the exact same style as the previous videos that I had done like a little get ready with me for ballet I filmed it, I went to class, I went home, I edited the video in like 20 minutes and I posted the video expecting nothing to happen and then the video went viral it got like 3 million views in the first week or something I got my first thousand subscribers like it was a crazy period in my life like I wanted to post more of ballet videos because people were asking for that and I was trying to post more videos like that but I also had some clips of me practicing the Nutcracker and I decided to post a clip of that too not really thinking much about it because no one was really watching my videos besides that one video that got viral and those videos also got some traction but because I was so new at this I didn't really know what was the best way to deal with this and how to ask for the right permissions about posting videos with other people but I only found out until much later that people actually weren't really happy about me posting those videos in classes in this studio the great thing was that I got the opportunity to dance the nutcracker which has always been one of my biggest childhood dreams and it was just amazing it was really difficult I practiced a lot I had to put everything on hold in my entire life to be able to prepare for this show because it was just really intense in the weeks leading up to the show but the actual show was just super fun I didn't really mess up the choreography, I was really proud of myself. It was just this most magical moment on stage, like being able to dance flowers, which is one of the roles that I've always loved, and seeing every level, like being so excited about the show. It was just so magical and Christmassy, and I loved it. And after the Nutcracker, I went home for the holidays. I actually stopped posting for about a month because during the time that I went viral something really crappy happened with my family and I didn't really process what was happening because it was just everything was just so chaotic and when I got back to Iceland I found out that I actually couldn't take classes 
in my studio anymore because I was basically kicked out. I wasn't technically kicked out. They invited me to find a place that was a better fit for me. But I made a vlog talking about that when that happened. And if you want to know more about that, check that out. But yeah, I got really down about it. I didn't really know what to do because in Iceland, I couldn't find another studio that I could take that amount of classes. I went to the only other studio that I hadn't tried and they had some intermediate classes, but only once a week. And I tried that class. I actually really enjoyed it. It was a nice environment. And I've been taking those classes ever since. But after I posted what happened, some people actually reached out to me and gave me other options that I could try. I was also approached by other brands that wanted me to try out their alternative ways of learning ballet at a distance, which was amazing. And that allowed me to complement my only class a week with something else, even though I didn't really have the financial possibilities to take private classes like I was advised in my old studio or take all the classes in all the studios because that's just something that I can't afford at this moment. But now I think I found a path that is working for me and I'm really just hopeful that everything might be okay now. But when it comes to the future, I don't really know. My main goal has always been to get on point at some point, but I don't know if that's in the cards for me. I don't know how the rest of my valley journey is going to turn out. I don't really want to be a professional. If ballet can pay for ballet, I would already be fine with it. Even though I found such a great joy of sharing my journey online and making content and I've actually started to be able to work with brands and get some money by sharing my journey, that has always been great. And I was waiting to do this video when I had like a big partnership or when I eventually started to be able to pay my rent with this so I could say that I'm like an unprofessional professional ballerina because like what makes a professional ballerina? Like is it that you are paid to dance? Because in that case I'm a professional ballerina but also I don't want to take credit from actual ballerinas that are amazing and that they have dedicated their whole lives to better their craft, to be able to perform in a level that I'm so not close to it. And it's not valid because of the amount of success that I had, the amount of times I was able to perform or the amount of money that I can make because that was never the point. The point was me having fun. And I've been having so much fun I still find joy in dancing every day that I do it and that's just the most important thing for me. But if your goal is actually be able to support yourself by doing ballet, even though you started late, there are so many ways to do it. Veronica made a great video talking about that that you can check out. That was also one of my inspirations for this video. Like for example her, she has started a small business selling like ballet themed hats that are so cute and she also has an online magazine and she's documenting her journey and even though she's also like me doing a bunch of other jobs she has been able to get a bunch of partnerships to be able to support her ballet journey which i find that is amazing and you have tons of options out there of ways to actually make money with it but if that's not something that you want to do, you don't have to. You don't have to monetize everything that you are passionate with. You can just have fun with something. I feel like we are always stuck in this mindset that we need to be perfect at everything, that we can't lose our time doing something that we are bad at, which is so stupid of us. And we live in such capitalist world that we are always trying to make ends meet with everything that we do that thinking about spending hours of your day doing something that is not adding money to your bank account it's just something that it feels wrong but it's not and also 
adults and especially adult women are allowed to have hobbies for a grown woman the only thing that it's okay for you to spend your time doing is going to the gym maybe running doing some yoga because we need to remain fit and anything besides that is not valid but if a man in his adulthood wants to become like obsessed with golf tennis they can dedicate as much time as they want and when women do it it's not really well perceived. So we need to change that because that makes absolutely no sense. And it doesn't matter at what point you are in your journey. If you did it when you were a kid and you gave up, and if you have never done it, or you did it as a professional, but then you stopped for some reason, just try out a class. It can be so much fun. If you are met with some pushback of some people that don't get why you want to do it, find another place and if you can't find another place to do it that still supports you and wants to see you grow and improve, I may have found other solutions. So if you can't actually find classes near you or you just don't have the budget for it right now, which is totally valid, I have a cheeky little video that I'm preparing that can fix all of your problems and I'm so excited about it. So if you wanna see that, please subscribe and if you did enjoy this video, please give it a like and comment. Tell me about your Bali journey, if you have ever done it, if you want to do it. Like, I really want to know that and continue on this conversation in the comments. So yeah, I really hope that you have enjoyed this video and I'll see you in my next one. Bye!